Hi, it's me, Daniel, and I'm here with another 360 camera review, and this time it's the turn of the Views 360 VR. I've had this camera now for a few weeks, and I've gone out and tested it a few times, uh, shot some video, and I am now back to report on whether it's good, what it's good for, what it's bad at, and whether you should buy it or what, who should buy it, who it's for. So let me give you a bit of background information on this camera. It's a eight lens 360 camera that can shoot also in 3D. Now that's basically the main feature. It can shoot 3D 360 video and it's the only consumer 360 camera that can do that. So the only camera that's under like a thousand dollars. So it's got four sets of two lenses. So each pair of lens it acts as one eye each. And so that's why it can shoot in 3D. Now, I know 3D has been a bit of a fad in the past decade or so, but, um, and I personally don't like 3D movies, I don't like 3D cinema, it gives me a headache, but um, 3D combined with 360 video is actually very, very good because it gives 360 video depth and um, essentially it's only really useful when you are watching it on a VR headset. If you're watching it on a Oculus Rift or Gear VR or any kind of headset, that's when 3D 360 video really kind of, kind of comes into play and makes it a lot more immersive, makes the video a lot more uh, realistic. So the camera can shoot in 4K resolution, um, roughly the same as most other consumer 360 cameras. It's controlled primarily through an app, a dedicated app for your phone. It's compatible with both iPhones and Android, so that's pretty good. Um, <coughs> there are very few manual controls on the camera itself, just basically an on button and a uh, shutter button. It comes with its own uh, tripod, which is actually very, very good. It's the best kind of... Uh, tripod that I've ever been like that's in, been included with a camera and it makes sense because this is not a small camera this is not a camera that you're going to be running around with or um, using a selfie stick with really it wouldn't really balance very well it's quite heavy so this is more of a camera to put on a tripod and leave it and let it record the other thing that you get with the camera is this carry case which I'm actually very very happy with it's um, very t tough hear that it's kind of very solid most 360 cameras like come with a little bag or something um, and it offers some protection but um, I mean if you drop it with a bag it's still gonna crash it's still gonna smash the lens something's gonna break um, if you drop your views with uh, with this I mean it's very tough and this offers a lot of protection so like I say this is the only consumer 360 camera that can shoot in 3d and 360 however it's also one of the most expensive 360 cameras um, ever kind of released it's cost about seven hundred dollars now uh, which is very much up there with the yeah the most expensive like the similar to the GoPro Fusion and the Vib 360 and both of those can shoot higher resolution 360 video in 5K. So um, whether this turns out to be worth it, let's find out. Um, it can only shoot in 4K, but it can shoot in 3D. So is the 3D worth it? Well, let me uh, explain to you what I think. So let's just talk about the video quality in general. So I went out and tested the views um, just around London, like I usually do, and uh, shot in 4K, the maximum resolution. So I recorded it in 3D, but you can't really see the 3D element here because it's not on a VR headset. So I'm just showing you the normal 2D 360 footage. So this is what the quality is like. This is what it deals, how it deals with light and how it deals with um, how well it captures details, basically. So even if you don't want to record in 3D, this can also just record in 2D normal 360 video. And um, it does so very well. It captures details very well. It captures light very well. And um, among 4K 360 cameras, it is one of the best. Um, probably not quite the best, I would say. The Ricoh Theta V is records slightly better video um, overall. In fact, I did a comparison between the top 4K 360 cameras. Um, you may have seen it on this channel, but here it is anyway. It includes the views. And compared to the other 360 cameras that I tested, the views was, you know, either the best or the second best in uh, the tests that I did. It struggled the most in low light situations. Um, when it gets dark, it doesn't deal with low light that well. It kind of gives it a blue tinge. Um, I mean, a few cameras do this. It's not the worst, but it's just not the best either. And it also can overexpose light. If there is a strong artificial light, then it will kind of blow out and make it a lot brighter than it actually is. So um, if you're in a very bright situation, then that could be an issue. So overall, the 4K 2D quality is very good um, and among the best of all the 360 cameras I've ever tested. Now, how about the 3D? OK, so you won't be able to see the 3D 360 video here because this video that I'm this review isn't in that format. But if you go to uh, my channel, I'll put a link in the description where I tested, I did a, a test video in 3D and you will be able to watch it in 3D 360. So um, go there after this review if you want to check that out. Now also I really stress that you need to watch it in a VR headset um, to really see any kind of significant difference to really tell the difference between 2D and 3D 360 video. So I have viewed this video in a VR headset in 3D and I can tell you that you, you will notice a difference. You can see um, there it gives it depth, it gives it a kind of um, effect that is not possible on any other 
a camera that I've tested before, I can see the difference. Um, the issue is that 4K 360 video, even on in a, in a VR headset, even though it's 4K and that seems like a huge resolution, it still isn't quite high enough to look super, super clear because obviously a VR headset, the screen is like this close to your face. So um, you're going to be able to see the pixels. It's not going to be super, super clear, but it's good enough. It's like an introduction to um, a more immersive 360 video format. I mean, if you really, really, truly want super realistic um, immersive 360 video, then you need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on the top end uh, on the top end cameras that shoot in 8K, 10K, etc. But this is kind of like an introduction to that. So yeah, watch it on a VR headset and I'm sure you will notice a difference. It's not mind boggling, it's not going to blow your mind away, but you will notice a difference and it's certainly better watching a 3D 360 video on a VR headset than it is watching a 2D one because it gives it depth and makes it that more, much more immersive. And I should also point out that it will depend, obviously, on what VR headset you use. If you use something like this, which is kind of like a cardboard, Google Cardboard based um, product, that's basically going to be the lowest, poorest quality you can get because um, your phone screen isn't really designed to do that and it's just not a fully fledged VR experience, really. Basically, the ideal is that you would use an Oculus Rift or HTC Vive, which offer the highest resolution and the best screens, the best clarity, or one of these Windows VR mixed reality things that are coming out now. You can also take photos with the views, but it's not really designed to do that. I mean, it's much more of a video camera than a photo camera. The photo option is kind of just an extra thing that they added on. It doesn't offer particularly high quality. The, um, the resolution isn't huge. Um, there are much better photo cameras out there for taking 360 photos. So if you are particularly interested in photos, then this camera is not for you. Check out maybe the um, Insta360 ONE, the Ricoh 30V. I should also point out that recently, within the last month, um, Views, well, the human eyes who uh, developed the Views, released a very big software update for this camera. So this is the 2018 firmware that I tested. It's a much different camera, really, from when it was released um, in 2017. They've added a lot of features um, and improved a lot of stuff, including the software, the desktop app, and the app. So um, this is the latest software that I'm using, and this is what you can expect when you buy it. Now, how about the app that controls it? Because the app is also always, always very important. If the app sucks, then it's just going to be an annoying experience. Thankfully, the Views app is pretty good. Um, there are some things that are missing that are a shame that they're missing, but overall, the app doesn't crash. It's very easy to connect, and it's very easy to control the camera. The one thing that's missing is a live preview. You can't live preview in a full 360 format. You can only live preview um, one set of lenses at a time. But what I do like about the app, which is a great feature, is that you can control each pair of lenses individually. So um, you can control the exposure of one, pair, of one pair of lenses and then leave the other one. If there are some bright lights shining into that pair of lenses, you can um, adjust the exposure and to make it equal to all the other ones. So you don't have to adjust the whole camera at once. You can manually select which lenses you adjust exposure or light balance. You can also adjust the bit rate, you can adjust, um, like I say, exposure, light balance, and you can add a timer. So they I mean these standard things that you get on, on most apps, but um, it just works very well, it's very smooth, and there's a lot of manual controls there, so you have kind of full access to um, adjust lighting um, depending on what situation you're in. So the views can shoot at over 100 megabits per second, so that's very, very high compared to most other cameras, um, and should mean that there is more detail recorded, which is true, it can, it's very good at recording quite um, a lot of detail and so keep that in mind because it might take a while to render these videos when you use a desktop app. You can also select a lower bitrate if you want, it doesn't make a huge difference, there is a slight difference in the higher bitrate, especially if you're viewing it on a VR headset you will notice that slight bit of difference, but just for normal social media you won't really notice much difference. Actually the next thing I want to talk about is the desktop app because it's one of the better ones that I've ever used um, for a 360 camera. It's called the Humanize VR Studio. It's a dedicated um, desktop app for the views and you use it to stitch your video, to stitch the, uh, the video together, to make a 360 video. And you can also adjust um, saturation, ambience, light balance, color, that kind of thing, which you would normally do in Photoshop or, um, sorry, After Effects or Premiere Pro. You can do that straight in the um, Humanize VR app and you can really really dramatically change the look of your video very quickly. The one thing that's missing is that you can't chop and change, you can't cut video, you can't combine them, so you will basically probably end up having to use uh, After Effects or uh, Premiere Pro anyway if you want to combine videos or chop a little bit out in the middle, you can't do that in this um, in the Humanize VR Studio, which is the one thing that's missing. You can also adjust stitching, you can make sure the stitching is as accurate as possible, which is my final point to make about this camera is, uh, unfortunately it's a negative one, but the stitching is not great. 
Um, the one thing missing from this camera is accurate, accurate stitching, um, especially when you're moving. I did some moving tests with this camera and um, I found that the stitching is very, very obvious, even at a distance. Uh, for some reason, you can just see those lines where the lenses intersect. And unfortunately, there are four stitching lines with the views instead of just two, because there are um, four sets of two lenses. Yeah, there are four stitching lines and they are quite obvious when you're moving or if someone's walking in between them. Um, so that is the major, major downside of this camera is that um, they really need to adjust the stitching to make it as accurate as possible. So it's not so obvious if the camera is still like on a tripod and there are people far away, but get anywhere close to the camera and you walk through it like here, you'll see um, the kind of blurriness between uh, where the stitching from each two lenses are. So in this latest software update, like I say in the Humanized VR Studio, you can adjust the stitching quite a lot. You can uh, manually control it. And I've had a play with it. I mean, it's quite complicated to get it right. I and mean, if you never used that before, you might not understand what's going on. But I certainly made some improvements when I used this feature and it's possible to get pretty accurate stitching, but just right from the go, it would be good if it was a lot more accurate and you didn't have to do this kind of stuff. Obviously, stitching can be updated, it can be made better. It's not necessarily a hardware limitation, it's more software. Now, a quick word about the audio as well. Um, the audio is okay. I mean, there's four microphones, so I mean, it can technically should be able to capture like 360 spatial audio, but for some reason it doesn't. But the audio itself is quite clear for, you know, considering it's the microphones inside a camera, usually they're awful, but this is actually pretty good in comparison to some others. So who is this camera for? Who should buy it? Should you buy it? Um, I think that this is a expensive camera. There's no doubting that this is expensive. If this was just a 4K 360 camera, then I would say it is overpriced. Um, $700 is a lot. And you can get similar quality 4K video for around about $400, uh, maybe even cheaper. However, this doesn't just shoot 4K 360, it also shoots 3D. Um, now, is the 3D worth that extra, extra expense? If you're gonna be recording video specifically for a VR audience, specifically for people who want to watch it on a VR headset, then yes, it is worth the expense, primarily because it's the only camera that can do 3D, and 3D does make a difference if you are watching it on a VR headset, if you're watching it on even one of these, which is very basic, it does make a difference. So yes, if you are making a 360 video for a VR audience, then yes, this camera is worth it, even though it's super expensive, even though it lacks some features like stabilization and um, accurate stitching, but it's a decent product, it works well, it's well built, and um, the video looks good at the end of the day. If you are just wanting a 360 camera to shoot for social media, to shoot for um, yourself, to shoot for creating memories, to shoot for uploading to uh, Facebook and YouTube, and you don't really care if people watch it on a VR headset, then I wouldn't recommend this camera because it's, um, you know, you're not gonna use that 3D extra, which is what you're paying for, really. So I've really enjoyed using this camera. It's the first, like, multi-lens camera I've used properly, and um, it wasn't complicated to use. It was very simple to create 3D 360 video, which I like, and it looks good on a VR headset. If it was $100 cheaper, then I would be, yep, go buy it. Definitely, it's amazing. Um, but at $700, it's just, uh, you need to think about it. If you can afford it, then go for it. Um, it's still a good camera, but it is expensive. That's what I'm gonna say, it's expensive. Or, so if you're interested in creating 360 and 3D video, then the Views is a good option. Uh, it's well supported by Human Eyes. They're constantly releasing updates. And um, yeah, there's a whole community out there who can help you um, create the best video possible. So I hope this has been useful. If you have any questions about the Views, then let me know. I will be shooting more video with it, hopefully in the next um, coming weeks and months. So check my channel if you are interested in that kind of thing. And also plenty more um, cameras coming up. I've got two more. 360 cameras coming in the next few days, which I'm gonna use and review and show you guys what they're about. If you want more details on this camera specifically, then I have a full written review with all the specs and loads of example videos on my website, 360cameras.com. So check that out, it's in the description, the link, if you want uh, to read more about this camera. If you're interested in creating 360 content in general, then subscribe because I've got loads of tutorials and reviews um, which should help you in your journey to creating some decent 360 content. So that's it from me today. Um, I hope this has been useful and I hope you subscribe and I will see you around. Bye-bye.